Hello everybody, this is Pastor Pete and Merry Christmas! Man, I hope you had the best Christmas Eve night. If you were at our services last night, I know you enjoyed them. Maybe you didn't have chance, you were with your family or whatever. I'm just telling you that we just had a great Christmas Eve service, but right now I want to address you to a subject matter that is just overflowing. All month we've been talking about joy. That's what Jesus does. He's the joy giver, and specifically Christmas joy. Well, before I get going, because I'm really, as you can tell, really ready to roll and being excited about this and to address you on this wonderful Christmas day, I want to pray that the Lord of all creation would just bless you. Heavenly Father, I pray that you would just anoint everybody watching this at this moment in time, whatever day it is, that they would just experience a new level of joy in the spirit. Thank you, Jesus. You're the reason for the season. Thank you for being born and thank you for bringing life into us all. In the name of Jesus, amen. Well, there is a scripture in Galatians chapter 4, verses 4 through 5, that has been rumbling around in my mind all Christmas season. And even though Galatians really has nothing to do with the Christmas story like that we read in Matthew and in Luke, it has everything to do for the reason Jesus came as a little baby. Now, let me quote the scripture to you. At just the right time, God sent his son, born of a woman, born of Mary, born of a woman, born under the law to redeem those who were under the law. Here's the reason why. So that we might have full rights and be heirs of the son of the living God. And doesn't that thrill you? Joy to the world, the Lord has come. So I just want to break that down and and let's just meditate on it for a few moments. At just the right time, God. You know what? There's a time and a season for everything. I think you watching this video is just the right time. I think that many people gave their hearts to Jesus during this holiday season. It was just the right time. Maybe you're looking for something, you've been praying about something, and it just doesn't seem to come your way. I got news for you. God will meet you at just the right time. Maybe you've been praying for your babies, your children to be saved. Maybe they're out hand, outside of the arms of God. God hasn't let go of them, but I know that there's a time coming because at just the right time, God. Man, you've probably been thinking, or some of you, you know what? I got some financial problems. Lord, I prayed and I prayed and it doesn't seem to be getting any better. Man, I'm gonna encourage you to keep praying because at just the right time, God. Maybe you got difficulties in your marriage and and it just doesn't seem to work out and and you're fearful. Why don't you say this to yourself right now? God, I, I don't know how to do this, but I know that at just the right time, you're gonna intervene. Don't you love that? At just the right time, God. Perhaps you've been looking for a new job. Things don't work out for you. You're working in a place. You're bringing a paycheck home, but that's not what you love. Man, begin to pray. And I guarantee at just the right time, God. Man, we can go on and on and on, but there's a time and a season for everything. Do you know what the Bible says in Psalms 139? It says that God has you in the hollow of his hand and all the days ordained for you are written in the book before one of them came to be. And you know all the days that are written and ordained? They're all written and ordained at just the right time, God. Wow. <laughs> God says we're fearfully and wonderfully made and, and even in our mother's womb, he saw us. God knows you. At this Christmas, can I tell you something? God knows you. He, he's watching you right now. The angels of heaven, if you've given your heart to Jesus, are all around you. And, and maybe you're alone. I want to speak to you if you're lonely. Can I tell you what? You're never alone with Jesus at just the right time. I challenge you when this message is over to pick up the phone. Talk to somebody. Text somebody. Start calling everybody or texting everybody that you can and just tell them Merry Christmas. And don't, don't tell them your, your problems or your sorrows. Just make their life better. 
might be 10 o'clock in the morning, 11 o'clock, maybe it's in the afternoon, and you think, well, they're eating dinner. It doesn't matter. Just call them and say, hey, this is so-and-so. I just want to tell you Merry Christmas, and I hope you have the best day ever. And I guarantee you will be picked up because you don't know. Maybe they're waiting for something, and you're going to be just the right time for them. That's the first thing. At just the right time, God. Here's the next part. At just the right time, God sent his son, born under a woman, born under the law, to redeem those under the law. You know, God sent his son. For God so loves the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. For God didn't send his son into the world to condemn the world, but so that through him the world might be saved. God did that for you. God did that for me. Jesus was born in a manger. He was born of a virgin Mary, raised by a stepfather on this earth. He did that for you and me. God sent his son for you and for me. Joy to the world, the Lord has come for you and for me. I've had too many people tell me, this is very discouraging to me when I hear people say this to me, and that it's too late for them, or they've gone too far, or they messed with God, they, they were too much of a sinner. You're not too much of a sinner. It's never too late. God has you in the hollow of his hand so that at just the right time, he came into your life and he is coming into your life. This could be it. Remember Joseph and in the book of Matthew, Joseph, who was engaged to Mary, found out she was pregnant and just, he, he, he was a just man and, and, he, and he thought, well, I, I don't want to embarrass her. We'll just have a quiet divorce a quiet separation, and then an angel appeared to him in a dream and said, uh-uh, bring Mary into your life because she is pregnant with that thing is from the Holy Spirit, and he's the son of the living God. See, at just the right time, God sent his son into the world. It was a perfect time. 2,000 some odd years ago was perfect timing. It wasn't bad timing. Why not now? Why not before? It was the perfect time, the perfect place. It was a perfect setup because that's how our God is. At just the right time, God sends his son into a perfect place, a perfect time, a perfect setup to redeem us who are bound under the law. You know, the law says that we should die. We should die in our sin and we should be punished. But Jesus takes that away. Here's what we know. For all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. You're a sinner and I'm a sinner. We're all sinners under the law. And then the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. That's why Jesus came. At just the right time, God said his son, born of a woman, born under the law to redeem those. That's you and me who are under the law. Here's what the word says. Anyone who calls upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. And now let's get to the end, which is the juicy part. It's the icing on the cake, man. It's the sugar and the cream and the coffee. For those of you that like sugar and cream, I do. It's that thing that just makes it worthwhile at just the right time. God sent his son, born into the woman, born into the law, to redeem those of us, you and me, who are under the law so that we might become heirs and have the full rights as children of the living God. We are heirs, the Bible says, and joint heirs. We are the seed of Abraham. When we believe in Jesus and bring him into our life, the seed of God falls into our life and we begin to experience what the word calls blessing. And we can appropriate that blessing. I'm an heir and a joint heir and so are you. For too long, Maybe you, maybe, you know, I've realized myself a while back, for too long I had lived under the law, I'd lived under that thing that just kept me under its thumb, feeling guilty, feeling like there was no hope, I never get a break, things don't go my way. No, God redeemed us so that we might have full rights as children of the living God. Let me tell you about my house and your house the same. I have two kids, I have eight, great, eight grandkids. When either one of my kids come to my house, 
I, it's, I've got a combo lock on my front door. They don't knock. I don't have to go to the door. I don't have to let them in. They have a combination. In fact, I've assigned one combination for my daughter and one for my son. They just press the combination and they walk right in. Why? Because they're walking into their father's house. Behold, Jesus stands at the door and knocks. And he says, if anyone hears his voice and opens the door, he'll come in with them and sup with them and they will be with him. You are a child of the living God. You can pray at any moment. You can ask God for things in the name of Jesus. Here's what the Bible says that if we ask anything according to his will, he will hear us. And we know if he hears us, he's going to answer us. You see, I can go into being an inheritor, being a child of a living God, but I want you to start, and I urge you to start making bolder steps. Walk through the door. Walk through the door. I'll tell you another thing. My kids come in the house. They don't sit down at the couch. Hey, Mom. Hey, Dad. Can I get something to drink? Is it okay if I have a glass of water? No. They go get a glass, and they get the water. They open the refrigerator. If there's a soda or something in there and they want it, they just get it. Now, here's the best part, and here's where we're going to bring this thing to a conclusion. I got eight grandkids. They all come running through the door, and it doesn't matter. The oldest is 14, the youngest is two, and they're all the same. They come through the door. Hey, Pop. Hey, Nana. Hey, Grandma. And you know what they do? They turn right into the kitchen. They turn right into the pantry. This is the truth. They don't come over and hug or nothing. They go right in the kitchen, right in the pantry. They know exactly what to look for. They crawl up on a step stool if they're young. If they're old, they just reach for it. And they get the snack that they want. Why? Because they are my heirs, my children, and they have full rights. We give them free reign. We don't question them. We are all children of the living God. We have full rights to his house, full rights to the pantry. Full, full rights to the other children of the living God in, in doing things together and creating life together because the Son has set you free. And I'm going to give you the scripture one more time. Then I'm going to ask you to ask Jesus into your heart if you need it. And we're going to say Merry Christmas and God bless that you'll have the best day ever. Here we go. If you die tonight, do you know if you're going to go to heaven or hell? Why? For at just the right time, God sent his son, born of a woman, born under the law, to redeem those, you and me, who were under the law. Why? So that we might have full rights as children of the living God. And if you can't say in your heart, just like this, boom, I'm going to heaven. I've given my heart to the Lord. Maybe you're watching this and you have an I don't know or maybe everything that I've described, it just doesn't seem to fit you. You just can't, you can't really plug in. The good news is I wanna give you the greatest gift on this Christmas day, the gift of Jesus. So if you'd like to give your heart to Christ, I know we're on camera together. I'm looking at you, you're looking at me. But would you do me a favor? If you wanna give your heart to Jesus on Christmas day, just blink your eyes like that. Do it one more time, just close them and open them. That's just you telling yourself, I'm ready. And I want to lead you in a wonderful prayer. And if you're honest with God, God will set you free. So are you ready? Good. Here we go. Let's say it together. Dear Lord Jesus, I confess I'm a sinner. I ask you to come into my heart and forgive me for my sin. I believe you died for me. And I believe you rose again. And with your help, from this day forward, I will live for you. In Jesus' name, amen. If you gave your heart to Jesus, what a great Christmas present that you have given to yourself. I hope this is a wonderful Christmas day. I hope it's the best Christmas day ever. Why? because you were bought and paid for by Jesus Christ and he loves you. And if you prayed the sinner's prayer, if you prayed that prayer to accept Christ, click on the links in the description below. We want to help you walk with the Lord and, and really experience the fullness of God. 
And if you've been blessed, please make sure to share this to your friends that are online. Maybe you know others, and perhaps you're one of those I talked about that is all by yourself, and you know others that are by themselves. Why don't you just text them or share this on your um, webpage or wherever you're at. Just share it and let them know that, hey, got to take a hold of this quick little Christmas sermon. I think you're going to love it. And also, if you'd like to give a great Christmas gift to those less fortunate, anything that comes in on Christmas Day, we're going to put out, I promise you this, 100% dollar for dollar. We'll put out for those who are less fortunate. I already have some things in my mind who we want to help. Homeless people, people who are struggling this season, we want to help. So all you have to do is you can give online, text to give, mobile give, in service. You see where to send it there and just put Christmas offering and it'll go to somebody who needs a real handout and a hand up today. I hope you've been blessed. So let's just celebrate God by talking to ourselves. I am blessed. I have divine favor. And I am not alone. I'm a child of God. I am more than a conqueror. I put my trust in the Lord. And I walk in the promises of God's holy word because God has a miracle for me. Merry Christmas to you. Have a great day and the best one ever.